Welcome to Film Shapes, the podcast. Turn to the right! The first time I met Ed was in the county lockup in Tempe, Arizona. You're a flower, you are. A day I'll never forget. I do. You bet I do. Okay, then. Hi, everyone. Uh, This is the first in the series of You Mean You Haven't Seen? And this week, we're talking about Raising Arizona. So it's hello to Roly. Hello. And hi to Bryony. Hi ho! How's it going, guys? Good, great, Pretty good. Okay, so now raising Arizona is the second film from the Coen brothers, Joel and Ethan, uh, made in 1987. Um, I reckon it's kind of an absurdist romantic comedy, and it stars Nicolas Cage, Holly Hunter, and John Goodman. Um, now, you guys hadn't seen this before, right? I hadn't seen it ever. No. Okay. What did you think? Well, it was all right. It was an all right film. Um, My feeling on it is that this one would have been one of the most unique kind of groundbreaking films of film releases of 1987. Mm. Looking at it in 2020, um, it seems, you know, understandably really quite dated. But, and, you know, in, in terms of the humour and, you know, it didn't really feel like a, a comedy. It felt very kind of slapstick. Mm, that's a comedy. Yeah, but not very funny, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that that's just my really reading think. of it. That was my reading of it. Okay. And I've got Nick Cage in it. I've got a lot of baggage, you know, with, with Cage. And, you know, this is – actually, the performances in this film were all – very good you know it's nice to see people like john goodman a little younger and and Mm. everyone is obviously younger but you know it's a nice it's nice to look back on as a memory piece but it's not a film you know that i'd you know seek to watch again okay yeah um brianie what do you think um i had a similar sort of response i I had actually seen bits and pieces of it over the year, but had never, uh, over the years, sorry, mm-hmm. but never actually sat and watched it in its entirety. Like I just caught like maybe a little bit of the beginning when it might have been on TV or a little bit of the end or, um, so some of it was a bit familiar to me, um, mm. but I had a very similar feeling where I could see how it would have been like, quite something when it was released but I found myself getting a little bit kind of frustrated with it yeah, I think yeah. frustration was a bit of a feeling and and I'm, I'm going to go out on a quite a long limb here and say like moments of it like the absurdist which actually normally really appeals to me I like absurdist humor it felt almost a little bit like Monty Python's now for something completely different, ah. um, which sort of falls into the sort of slapstick kind of vibe, like just the the endless sort of yelling scenes and things like, you know, it kind of reminded me of the guy who steps out onto a field and just blows up kind yeah. of. Yeah, yeah, there's a bit of that. <laughs> sort of, yeah. Um, which, yeah, I was... I was a bit, I didn't remember it sort of being, I think my memories of it was, oh, wow, this is kind of quirky and unique, but watching it in its entirety, I was a bit disappointed. So you you guys think it it has aged quite a bit then by the sounds of it? Yeah, not not the look Mm. of it and not so much, you know, the the styling of it, but the, the, um, the visual styling, I should I think, say, but the 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 scripting styling and the directing styling. I feel like the brothers have outgrown it. Cinema yeah. has outgrown oh, yeah. it. It's it's a bit. It's a toddler, really. Mm. It was. I feel like it's a sign, you know, at the early stages that these guys knew how to make films, you know, to a high quality. It's you know, their I, second I, movie, right? So yeah, yeah. So. Uh, you know the cinematography and everything on the technical level is amazing with it, 
but yeah, and story wise and actual actual laugh value, no, no, okay. Oh, I mean, uh, I, I I I've seen this probably four or five times now since it was wow. released. I guess when I still la- laughed at this. When was the last time you saw this? Oh, ten, maybe oh, ten oh, years hang ago. On, hang on, hang on. So you haven't seen the film recently? No, last time, yeah. last night. You've seen it ten years ago. Fucking last night, dickhead. I mean, before that. Oh, so you saw it last night again? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. All right. Yeah. All right. So That's the whole you, deal. Did you That's enjoy it as much <laughs> last night as you did ten years ago? Um, I think so. It's still. I mean, I probably it's it's a bit of a nostalgia piece for me. Mm. Um, yeah. I. I I don't think I saw it at the time. I probably would have been well, 14, I guess, but I might, I must have seen it on telly uh, when I was about 17 or 18. Um, and mind you, this is just before oh, – this is their second. They went on to do Miller's Crossing a bit after this and then uh, Barton Fink, which is my favourite of their film. So they kind of – I think they stepped it up, each film. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. I think it's um, I think for its time and in their the timeline of their professional development, like it, it's you know, it's a fine film. Um, but yeah, if if I was, yeah, if I'm rating it today, like, would I go? Oh yeah, like watch this film. It's it's amazing. I just don't feel that way. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, may, maybe it's. I do remember this being kind of. Uh, can I say zeitgeisty? Mm. Uh, in, in, not with everybody, yeah. I think, but with a bunch of you know people that I hung out with, I think. So some of the lines, you know, like "Son, you get a penny on your head," and that those kind of things are yeah, yeah, quite yeah. repeatable. Yep. Um, so yeah, yeah, maybe maybe that's it. It has. It's it's interesting to think about what is it with certain films that makes that happen because yeah, it does seem to be in. With the popular culture of the day, somehow, yeah. You know, same. I know people that quote this film. It's like, what's that from? I've never seen that film. Mm. But it's like, uh, then I saw the film. It's like, there's nothing I would say again, really, from this film. I wouldn't go around quoting it now. <laughs> maybe if I'd seen it at the time, it, and it and it felt like I was part of this. Um, you know, I was at the spearhead of this. These new ideas yeah. that this it, film seemed to be bring out at the time then it might yeah be, yeah know. did you did you know i was trying to pick little little things that they have done since in their films um did you notice any tricks or any anything that you would you know pick out from say big lebowski or no country for old men or something like this i mean th- they tend to use the same actors over and over don't mm-hmm. they yeah I mean- Films of has John Goodman's been in like every one of their films, just about. So yeah, a, a few yeah. certainly. What was he? Was he in Oh Brother? He was, wasn't he? He was, yeah. Um, Big um, Lebowski, uh, Barton Fink, Ooh. yeah. Miller's Crossing. Yeah. I don't know if he was in that, but yeah, yeah, certainly a bunch of them. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I sort of see some of those characters as just being very recognisable in themselves, but uh. In terms of that, I don't know. Maybe some of the road traffic, or yeah. the, the grenade. Pit. Where did the 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 pin, I've seen that before somewhere where the the pin of the grenade gets pulled and they don't realise till afterwards. Is that in another Coen Brothers film? I, maybe not, maybe, but it's it's mm. definitely in something else, and definitely probably something that came after this film. So, I mean, the Coen yeah. Brothers might have borrowed from this as as much, but. Other filmmakers have definitely done so as well, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, th- this this is – it's so early in their career. It's up just after Blood Simple, which was pretty good too, actually. And then th- this is actually before they started editing themselves. They used somebody else. I can't remember the name. But they would edit usually under the pseudonym Roderick Janes. I think it's something to do with award recognition or something. So they edit it now. Generally, they edit their own stuff. Um, I'm not sure about really recently, but certainly for yeah. many of them. And they pretty much um, focus on Roger Deakins' focus on. What a terrible pun. They, they use Roger Deakins for the yeah. cinematography for most of their films now. But this one was Barry Sonnenfeld, who's now, oh well, who directed a few things like um, 
Ah, uh, what did he do? Something like Adam's Family or uh, Men in Black and those kind of films. So, yeah, yeah they had a different crew for this one. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So what was the film before this again? Yeah, it's called Blood Simple. Uh, okay. With um, Frances McDormand, who, again, she's in a few of their films, but that's probably because she's married to Joel, I want to say. Maybe it's Ethan. Anyway, she's married to one of the Coens, but... Yeah. yeah, she was yeah. in. She was in this film. She was the the annoying friend who came to visit them. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've seen her in something recently. Actually, she was in Three Billboards. Yes, oh, well. there we yeah. go. Yeah. So I think this film. It's probably a bit unfair. Maybe we're being a little unfair to it because a lot of the films that have come after this, and you know, probably been partly inspired by some of the things in this film. But they've just done it better, and the whole genre's moved on, and this feels like a poorer cousin. Okay, more uh, okay, uh, yeah, sure. But if you remember the early eighties, from comedies from America were what Porky's and and um, those Bill Murray films with the uh, Stripes yeah, and all those kind of things. Yeah, there this is this film. is a fair bit better than those. Is it better than uh, Beverly Hills Cop? Oh, I don't see that as a comedy. That that's you know, what? I'm talking about like straight out laughs. No, that Beverly Hills Cop is, a, is an action as a comedy. It's an action comedy. You okay? Yeah. yeah this is yeah, but this is, oh, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> well, I, 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 I actually think this would have felt <laughs> really new and different and yeah. exciting in amongst the lo- like. I I'm guessing uh, this is. I was two when this was released. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Okay, you would have been laughing. But you know, I feel like because our pa- our parents and our household were like cheapskates, we had to grow up on weekly movies. We never got new releases, so I mm. a lot of the eighties flicks. Um, but the things that I think of in a similar era are like Police Academy, and right? Revenge mm-hmm. of the Nerds, and <clears throat> I don't know That's if I'm in the right era. Um, I feel yeah. like I'm. I must be close. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, and that is very, very different. And I know finding those things like so funny as like a six year old, but how <laughs> I might receive them. Like I don't even know if a six year old today would find them funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about the market, but probably not these days. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that yeah. I, I think. It, it probably it was a bit of a groundbreaker when it was made, and maybe it has aged a little bit, and it, you know. But some of the performances are really, I mean, they're, they're nuts, they're over the top, but they're quite played quite straight, and there's some sincerity in their performances, especially Cage and Hunter. Um, yeah, I, I think they um, those two are great. Yeah, I feel like maybe um, they've just gotten tighter. I feel like they were really sort of relishing in the differentness of things. So some scenes just I feel like probably just went for a little bit too long because it yeah. was like, oh, this is so absurd. It's so funny. Let's let it ride for a bit longer. Like, yeah. And just yeah. like, like it's little not a scenes. Long film. Well, just even the little, the bit where, you know, um, he climbs out of the muddy hole mm. and screams like for. Yeah, that screaming stuff. Forever you know, when and ever and ever. And then, and then he pulls another one out of the and hole think, and then it starts again. And, and when the to... baby, they think the baby's fallen off, off the roof and <laughs> on that scream that just goes on forever, I mean. Like I feel like you could have had just, the funny scream and it could have gone yeah, for like a third of the amount of time and you still would have got the laugh. Yeah, it was tacky. Like, but it, it looks just, tacky now. That's what now. I feel like now they, mm. they'd be a lot tighter around things like well, that. Well, I, I guess they had to focus on the the muddy. That's a birth scene, basically, and they're talking about babies. And there's John Goodman, a big fat baby, get, getting birthed from the earth. You know, so yeah. um, yes. Another thing, this seemed to me like it was made by a non-American director. Did you guys think the same? No. <laughs> what, <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, well, not, like you. <laughs> I appreciate that you think that I would actually be discerning enough to go, hmm, this why feels would it, uh, yeah. slightly more. Let me tell you. Okay, let me explain why. <laughs> enough guns in this film to um, 
to be definitely an American film. Yeah, no, no. But the way they're taking the piss out of their characters, almost all of the characters are kind of having fun poked at them, I think. It's not, it, yeah, it seems like it'd be an outsider view of that part of the US. But they're from the Midwest, I think, these guys. So. Yeah, but the Americans love poking fun at themselves in that way. I mean, there's more anti-Americans in America probably than almost any other country in the world. I don't know about that. <laughs> Surely not. But, yeah, I don't, but I don't know what you mean, yeah. Canada as well. But, you know, that's, mm. yeah, uh, I'm not sure about that one. So. No? Okay. I, I mean, it just came to me last night when I was watching. I thought, yeah, they're, they're really taking the piss. And, you know, is it, it, it's maybe in this day and age it's not quite, you know, the, the, the done thing to take the piss out of well, yourself I'm, if you're American. Mm, I did liken it to Monty Python, which is British. So yeah, yeah, it's there possible. Yeah, it's a, it's a good it's a good bow to draw. Do you get that when Bruce Springsteen sang "Born in the USA," that mm. that it was an ironic song? That uh, he was saying no. how great the USA is. You like you get that? No, I didn't. I've never really listened to the lyrics of that song. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just just as an example. It's a good example yeah. to bring up. Yeah, thanks. You, you listen to Born in the USA with uh, with it in mind that he's actually criticising America. But uh, So now you're uh, going to tell me the, the song from, um, what's that, That is it Team America, World Police or something, the America Fuck Yeah song, That that's a piss take that as well? One? That's, oh, no, that's real. That's real. That's, that's real. Okay. Team America, isn't that? But you know what I will say? Yeah, puppets, yeah, yeah. I'm going to bring Matt this. Damon. <laughs> Damon, I'm going to bring this up again because it's it's the film that you re- refuse to see. Yes, but it's a hell of a lot funnier than this one. If you were to watch Daddy's Home, <laughs> <laughs> shit, it's it's a fucking it, funnier film than this so racing good. Arizona shit. It is so good. <laughs> uh, you've just really, yeah, you, you've can we really? Yeah? I'm going to have to edit that bit out. Yeah. I'll be so pissed off if you edit that out. I, I, you're happy for me to leave that in? You're going to get the only the only Will Daddy's Ferrell is, film yeah. that tops that one. I think is the other guys, which is just like oh, that's, yeah, oh, that's, guys, I didn't like hell, the other guys. Oh, so much. I love that. I found it hilarious. No, they, they didn't have the dance off in that. The dance off is very good. Wow, that, that is another. You've just fucking oh. derailed this, dude. Come on. <laughs> I have to say that the That's dance, why I'm here. dancing to work your anger out, like that is something that we do in it. <laughs> so do. Right. Okay. okay. Man, you're going to get pelters for that, Rolly. <laughs> Daddy's home <laughs> is better <laughs> than oh. raising. Fucking hell. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll say it. it. No, I didn't I didn't say it's better. I said it's funnier. Yeah. yeah. Mm, okay, fair enough. It is it's 200% not. funnier in 2020. Uh, I agree with that. Okay, you've sort of got yourself out of that a little bit, you know. It, it's not a better film. You can't say that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I mean, I'm yet to see Daddy's Home, and I don't think I'll get to that. It's a more believable script. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it is actually. But I, just to, okay, go on. Sim- it is yeah. very similar in some ways, like with some of the tropes. And like sort of almost caricature style people like the, you know, you have a jailbird or you have like the tough ex-husband or you have the, the yep. so, you know, like in terms of the, the characters themselves are all incredibly um, kind mm. of standard. Um, uh, uh, sorry, you're talking about. I'm st- comparing. This is great. We're still talking about Arizona Daddy's home. Arizona and Daddy. Uh, um, but oh. but it it you know, pokes just to fun broaden it out a little. I brought to broaden it out a little bit. I think films have become much more aware of themselves in a public way. In in sure. some way, like every film you see is aware of itself when it's replaying these tropes and things now. And maybe Raising Arizona was one of the earlier films to do that in the, you know, moving forward. But mm. I don't know. I think, yeah. I don't, yeah. Do you, now, do you, can, you laugh, you know, but if it doesn't make you laugh, you can't, you can't say it was a great comedy. 
Sure. No, that's, that's, that's completely fair. That's what this is all about, I guess. I mean, if you're going to make me watch some dross next week, uh, you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to take what I'm, what I'm thinking about it. But I don't know. Maybe what you recommend is great. We, know, we haven't actually decided upon the film yet, have we? Um, no, well, uh, yeah. Do you, do you but, want to decide now? <clears throat> what did you? What was the offer? Bowfinger. Or, or there was something else, wasn't there? We got it down to two. Oh, there was something else in my list. Yeah, oh. Bowfinger or... Hang on, well, while you're getting that list, um, just a, a, a final one. Where do you guys sit generally on the Coens and what do you have a favourite Coen Brothers film? Yeah, I do. Um, no Country for Old Men. Mm, okay. yeah, one of my favourite films of all time. Great. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we agree on that one. That's that's my second favourite after Barton Fink. It's one of the best films ever made. Yeah, I'd go yeah. pretty close to that, yeah. Bryony, have you got a favourite? Um, I don't. I I generally like their films. Um, yeah, I like all of them generally. Um, mm. I, I really liked No Country for Old Men as well. Um, yeah, that- it, it'd be hard to put put a finger I, and you know I do love a lot of the music and stuff they use um, yeah yeah generally um uh oh brother we're out there has to be pretty high up I'd say yeah yeah that's that, good but yeah it, I do enjoy that one a lot. Like even when they even when they don't really hit all their marks their films mm. are rarely terrible I mean I don't I didn't like Hudsucker Proxy um What's I, the other I, one? Oh, it's a really boring one. There's many I haven't seen. Actually, I like the Lewin Davis. Yeah, one. that's really good. That's it's in my top five of theirs. Like yeah. also see why other people would hate that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Um, um, go on. What's what's on this list? Have you cracked this list yet? No, well, I think it was either between Bowfinger, and it's up to you. We could do mm. Bowfinger or The Square, which is the 2017. Mm. Swedish production. <clears throat> yeah, I was thinking about um, watching that actually. Um, directed by Ruben Ostlund. Okay. Uh, shall we go for? Th- oh, you you call it. You call it. Let's do Bowfinger. Okay, that sounds good. I've, yeah, I've been I've been kind of keen to see that, and I've just seen a couple of Eddie Murphy films. So, yeah, why not? And, Bowfinger, it is. And I think um, it would be pretty easy to find someone else for that one. Certainly. Yeah. Well, see you next week, guys. Thanks for joining us. Bye. See bye. See ya. Bye. Hold on, Nathan. We're going to go pick up Daddy. I've been taking these nuggies and uh, whatever cash you got. <laughs> <laughs>